Hey guys, I'm Eric at AeroGuard Flight Training Center and today we are going to do the second part of the weight and balance videos. So previously we had talked a little bit about uh, why or the effects of weight and balance uh, or CG placement on our aircraft and today what we're going to do is focus on how to actually calculate that weight and balance. So behind me you'll see kind of an example case here and uh, I'm going to run through each of these elements, kind of talk a little bit about what they mean, where they came from, and then ultimately how we can use that to determine if we are within the tolerances for today's flight or not. So uh, to get us started, uh, the three columns of numbers that we see here, uh, the first one is weight. So this is just referring to the, to the force or, or a weight of whatever the object is. Uh, arm, the arm is referring to a distance measured from what the manufacturer will refer to as a datum or a datum plane. So it's just a, a fixed point on the aircraft that all of these distances are measured from. And the next or last column here is, is the moment. Moment is quite simply just a torque, which means a rotational force. So a rotational force occurs anytime we apply a force, such as this weight, a certain distance away from a point, right? And so we're measuring the uh, rotational force or the torque that each of these weights has around that datum. Uh, and we can use that then to sort of consolidate where we believe or wh where all of the weight we can say is concentrated towards, which if we say all the weight is coming from one point, we can also call that then the center of gravity. Uh, so that's how we're going to use this to ultimately calculate both our, our running weight as well as our, uh, the, the location of the center of gravity. So to get us started, we're going to start with just the airplane empty all by itself. We refer to this as the basic empty weight. Uh, this refers to just the aircraft with all of its components uh, and then uh, normal operating fluids, unusable fuel, this kind of thing. So just the airplane sitting out there by itself. Uh, and in today's case, we're saying that our aircraft weighs 1,800 pounds. Uh, its current CG location is in 90 inches from the datum, uh, and that gave us a moment of 162,000. We got all of that from the weight and balance in the aircraft. Easy enough. Now what we want to do is add all of the things we're going to be bringing with us for this flight. So we're going to bring, you know, the pilot and maybe a passenger and we're going to have stuff in the back seat or, or whatever. Um, in most smaller general aviation aircraft, we call these stations usually given names, uh, but really they're just, they're just stations. They're just specific locations on the aircraft that have designated points. Uh, and by points, I mean designated distances from that datum. So these red numbers that you see here are given by the manufacturer in the pilot's operating handbook and they just identify the position of the front seats or the position of the rear seats or the position of the baggage compartment or the fuel tanks. And that way uh, we can calculate the, uh, the effect that those weights will have uh, uh, against the datum. So, uh, in this example, I put in some numbers for a particular flight. Uh, this was uh, uh, two pilots that went flying together. They had a little bag in the back uh, and then nothing in the baggage compartment. They planned to, to fly for a while, so they, they had 34 gallons of usable fuel that they added, uh, which at six pounds per gallon uh, is about 204 pounds of fuel. And then I've simply just multiplied the weight times the arm to get these moments. So now we can add the total weights and we can add the total moments. And what we'll end up with is we're going to say that there's an average or a total amount of torque around the datum uh, of this 210,000-ish range, right? And the amount of force or weight that's creating it is this 2368. So now if I take that total moment and I divide it by this total weight, I'm saying the average location where all of that weight is, is creating this moment around the datum is at 89.1 inches, which is the same as saying that our ramp weight today, we're going to have a center of gravity location of 89.1. Okay, so we notice then that the CG has moved. After we 
got on board and we've added the fuel, right? Uh, the CG has moved, right? It was at 90 and it's moved forward by 0.9 inches, which uh, doesn't seem too crazy. The majority of the weight that we added was in front of the center of gravity, so it makes sense that the CG would have moved forward. Okay, now, we get in the plane, we start the engine, right? We taxi out, we do a run up, and we can assume that a, a little bit of fuel is going to burn off in that time frame. We typically average out about eight pounds. Uh, so we're gonna subtract that from both the weight and the moment so that we can end up with uh, our, uh, our exact takeoff weight uh, and center of gravity. Obviously with only eight pounds being moved or, or removed in this case, uh, there's not gonna be a significant effect on the, the center of gravity. Uh, nor really on the weight, right? Then we're, we're, what we'll need to do is subtract the trip fuel. So if we assumed uh, approximately uh, 20 gallons of fuel was going to be used for this particular trip, uh, multiplied by six gallons, uh, or six pounds per gallon gives us about 120 gallons, or 120 pounds of fuel that we're going to remove during the flight that we're gonna burn off. So we'll subtract that to get our landing weight we can also subtract that moment to get our landing moment. And then that, that way we can determine our uh, landing center of gravity. And once again, we see that the CG has moved, which also makes sense because we were taking weight away from a position that was behind the center of gravity. Uh, great. Now, how does that apply to this flight? How do I know that based on this information, we are good to go for this flight? So we're gonna check two things, right? One, we wanna make sure that our takeoff weight is under our maximum gross takeoff weight. And if we had a maximum landing weight, we'd wanna verify that our landing weight is, is below that as well. And number two, we wanna check what we call the CG envelope or the CG range uh, for our aircraft, right? So inside uh, the weight and balance section, so uh, section six of the pilot's operating handbook, we'd be able to usually see a table or, or a graph that would identify the uh, CG range for the aircraft. And we'd wanna make sure that from takeoff to landing, we stayed within that CG range or within the CG envelope. Um, in this case, we have, we're good to go. And so we know that we'd be fine to go on this particular flight. If we found that we were outside of those tolerances in some way, we may need to make adjustments uh, to where we've positioned things in the aircraft in order to, uh, to accommodate and, and ensure that we stay within that envelope uh, of operating. All right, great. Hopefully this has been helpful and uh, we now have a better understanding of how to calculate weight and balance. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and keep watching for more videos like this. Thanks. Bye.